Welcome to SVG TV's news for Friday, July 19th, 2024. I'm Tricia Campbell with the details. $136.4 million of cost in Parliament in the wee hours this morning. The monies will aid in the rebuilding and recovery effort for Sparking Barrel in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez, who presented the supplementary estimates, indicated that a large chunk of the money will go towards a cleanup and a reconstruction. We're not reinventing the wheel here. But that $29 million for the 23 for Braggs and the $6 million for the road cleaning, that is 21% of the budget right there. So one-fifth of the budget is to clean up the mess that Hurricane Beryl has caused. We have $10 million in the budget to build houses. And we have $12.5 million in the budget for building materials. And we have $1.9 million in the budget for aggregate, and we have $2 million in the budget for land. When you add all of that up together, you have $40 million in the budget or 29% of the budget for to begin the reconstruction phase. This is not in any way expected to assure anybody that this supplementary budget can build back everything in St. Vincent and the Grandines that has been described, that has been destroyed by Beryl. Far from it, Madam Speaker. You heard the minister added that an allocation of $12 million will go towards income support for fishermen and farmers affected by the storm. According to the finance minister, most of these farmers are in the northern part of mainland St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What we have to do, and the Honorable Minister of Agriculture can speak to it later, is do as accurate an analysis as we can in a short period of time about who has been affected. The, the blanket impacts of COVID or the volcano are a little bit more nuanced in this particular case, and we're going to have to do that analysis. But farmers and fishers have $12 million in this budget, Madam Speaker. I want to point out as well that even in the discussions that we had with uh, Mrs. McCain today, with the Honorable Prime Minister, their organization is talking about doing cash transfers. And I will speak later about the fact that the World Bank is also talking about replicating some of their cash transfer activities that they did for the volcano with us. So An additional over $7 million will go towards production support to farmers and the fishermen whose boats were destroyed by the hurricane. Meanwhile, $8 million has been allocated to the people in the tourism sector. Gonsalves said while people in the Grenadines will be prioritized, smaller business owners will also receive financial support. And most of that money will be concentrated in the Grenadines, though not all of it. Because as I told you earlier, Young Island is destroyed and it's closed and they have staff. And those workers as well will need some support, as well as other localized hospitality entities, you know, in other places and in, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But the bulk of it, the bulk of that $8 million will be spent in the Grenadines and the bulk of it will be spent in the hospitality sector. Not to say that another business person can't get income support. If you have a little shop and your shop mash up, you, it might not strictly speaking be hospitality, but we know how the economies of the Southern Grenadines and even the Northern Grenadines are held together. And that money is to provide income support in that regard. 50 million AC dollars was released from a contingency fund towards a supplementary budget. Other funding comes from international financial institutions. In his contribution to the supplementary budget, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday pointed out a number of areas that need to be further addressed in the national recovery effort. He said he supports the efforts made and that a long-term plan should now be put in place, especially as it relates to climate change. I wish, Madam Speaker, to indicate that I support wholeheartedly the effort to bring relief and support to 
those persons who have been damaged by Hurricane Beryl. It's a once in a lifetime hurricane. Well, it may no longer be because we are predicting more. Um, we can overcome this and we can do it better. But we have to think beyond the immediate response as to how do we rebuild, how do we as a community shape our future, what are the factors that we take into account. And one that we have to do now, urgently, is the effect of climate change and what it says for us as we go forward in the future. This is a lesson for us. An initial needs assessment has been carried out by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, the agency that is responsible for carrying out rapid needs assessment in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The clarification of the agency responsible for needs assessment was raised by Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Godwin Friday, the request posed to the Prime Minister, Dr. Alf Gonsalves, in Parliament yesterday. According to PM Gonsalves, all agencies are working together with a comprehensive national plan. Tidima is in the process of finalizing this report. The assistance of the World Bank has been sought to undertake a rapid damage and loss assessment called the Global Rapid Post-Disaster Damage Assessment Grade, the grade report. You may recall, honorable members, we're paying close attention to what I was reading from the IMF um, report about the World Bank doing the grade. This is it, Madam Speaker. The grade assesses direct damage to critical infrastructure and key production sectors, as well as social impacts, including fatalities in the displaced people and reference to local reports of the socioeconomic impacts. The grid does not assess economic losses. Responding to the question posed regarding how aid will be distributed to persons impacted, PM Gonsalves stated that there are resources available in the existing budget and the supplementary budgets. Our track record is exemplary. Embedded in the 2024 estimates is a sum in excess of 35 million for the continuation of housing reconstruction program post lasso fray eruptions and other housing programs. In the supplementary estimates crafted to respond to the immediate needs post burial, a further 22.5 million is provided for housing. Please, those who are listening, let them understand that this is the first of the supplementaries and this supplementary is starting from when it's passed today and put into law signed by the governor general assented to and published hopefully so the minister of urban development energy seaports grenadines affairs and the local government banava brown gave assurance that steps will be taken to protect salt whistle bay from further damage Minister Brown said the government of SVG recognizes the central and economic importance of Salt Whistle Bay, noting that a temporary emergency solution has commenced to preserve and save Salt Whistle Bay at a cost of $2.1 million. Investigate the long-term solutions. In light of the changes to the bay, the government will embark upon studies to ensure a permanent, feasible, and climate resilient solution is developed and implemented, implemented for this vital asset. Madam Speaker, I want to assure the people of the Southern Grenadines and the world at large that the, this government is fully committed to preserving Salt Whistle Bay, this geographical treasure which is also a significant social and economic asset will be conserved for the present generations and future generations of Myro and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Central Water and Sewage Authority has incurred an estimate of $18.4 million of damage as a result of Hurricane Beryl. This is according to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves while giving an update in Parliament yesterday on the destruction caused by the Category 4 storm in SVG. While there was no major disruptions in mainland St. Vincent, the southern Grenadines did have disruptions. However, water tanks have been utilized. 
As it regards to solid waste in the Southern Grenadines, the Prime Minister said provisions were made for the resumption of collection. On Beckway, the solid waste, the cleanup of the debris is going on as I speak. It's ongoing. The island, the disposal of bulky green waste is currently being accommodated at the old quarry area in Park. Metal waste is being accommodated on a piece of land next to the land fillet in Rain Tree. Solid waste on Canawan, the disposal site at Tafia restarted operations by July the 3rd. An area was identified for the controlled burning of green waste wood in the landfill. Metal is being stockpiled in the area of the warehouse near the wharf and domestic waste collection has resumed on the island by Jul Friday, July the 5th. On Myro, solid... Meanwhile, damage to Vinlay is estimated at $20.6 million, which will cost the government close to $40 million to rebuild the utility companies. Giving an update on restoration of lights in the Southern Grenadines, Prime Minister Gonzalez says a temporary lights are being installed in the island. Plans are to establish utility power to Clifton, in Clifton and up to the hospital in August. However, it is unlikely that Vinlec will be able to restore the entire Union Island network within 2024. Challenges in establishing generation and potential material shortages with long lead times. Vinlec has ordered 80 solar lights. The place around the island, due to the immediate absence of utility power and the expected prolonged restoration process. Dr. Andrew Simmons of Intention Climate Scientist says the impact of Hurricane Beryl was far worse than expected. Dr. Simmons was speaking at the handing over of relief supplies from GEMS uh, Hope for Hope, an organization based in the United States, stressed the need for a more collaborative effort between non-governmental organizations and the government. That is more, far more than what you know we were actually told. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I'd say that we need every hand. And on, on deck, government, NGOs, churches, and everybody, you know, to, to, to really do something about the situation. And so that's why I was really, really impressed, you know, when Carol and um, Tammy, you know, and her colleagues at work, you know, trying to make an effort to, you know, and so for me, this is a tremendous effort. Representative of Gems for Hope, Shannon Simmons, donated a number of items to hurricane-affected residents of Diamond and its surrounding communities. Simmons says her organization is happy to assist hurricane-affected victims. Simmons related that as she was saddened at the destruction caused by Hurricane Beryl, which she saw firsthand on one of her visits to Union Island recently. So happy that we are able to help in any little way that we are, we are able to. Um, it's going to go a long way, and I'm, as I say, I'll say it again, I'm happy I'm here, happy I'm able to help, and I hope that God um, touches everyone, that they're able to at least make a, another donation, that is, once seeing this, they'll be able to help more. Yes. Just when the boat docked into Union, and just seeing the destruction all around the building, the debris, just for everyone just like standing, like basically waiting for that boat to come in, standing on the, the port, just, I, I know, waiting for family members that sent food, supplies, whatever they, it is they were waiting for. Recipients of the donation shared their experiences and said they were grateful for the help. Giving us a shake up, mm -hmm. because you see what the, what the hurricane do, just a uh, moment, you ain't wipe the whole place. For my ex-friends, including the weather was so like, I was so like nervous because it's not the first time, but through the, um, the weather, I was a needle, like, so like, somebody was pulling the door. When I looked at it, it's the weather, um, the wind was pulling the door. So I was so like frightened, I said, mommy, mommy, well, come and help me. So my mommy come. My, my, mother, my mother came and my brother came and hold the door at the same time and my little niece was there so frightened 
she don't know what to do to say thank you to Carol and her daughter Connie, her friend and the, her other friends in the US who helped so generously in a time of need. You might feel that it is not much, but to us as the sentient is a lot. Wanted man Ronald Ronaldo Samuel is now in custody following his capture yesterday evening. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, the RSVGP, have issued a wanted bulletin for the laborer of Greenhill, who was recently convicted by the High Court on several counts of sexual offences. A warrant was issued after Samuel never returned to court at the completion of his trial. The police also said that Samuel was wanted for various cyber-related offences and that of sexual offences involving a minor.